Now that we've talked about quantified statements, we can now resume our conversation about arguments using quantified statements. The first thing I want to talk about is something called universal instantiation. And it's a simple concept, but it's very, very important. So universal instantiation says that if some property is true of everything in a set or group, then it's true of any particular thing in a set or group. And again, this is really simple, but important. This is the tool for deductive reasoning. So, for example, we could say if every swimming pool has water, then Sally's swimming pool has water. Here's another more mathematical example. If every, whoa, if every even integer is divisible by two, then six is divisible by two, right? If something is true of every item in some group or set, then it's true in a particular uh, item. Again, every in the particular item. So we're going to use this we're going to go back and look at some of those arguments now. And we're going to use this to make these arguments make sense. So this, let's, let's do an example of this. I'll do my example up here. I'm going to say, if a student studies hard, then they will pass the class. Sarah studies hard. What can we conclude? Well, we can conclude that therefore Sarah will pass the class. Okay, this is called universal modus ponens, and it has the form for all x, which is implicit here. We're just saying students, so we're talking about all students, and then we narrow in on our particular student. So that shows here, if you notice, we have change of variables. This x is talking about for all x, so it's the very general case. And what this really means is that if x makes p of x true, then it will make q of x true. So we're saying a general statement about a group of elements. If it's true about the, the group of elements, then we can use universal instantiation to say that it's true about a specific argument. So here P of A means some particular A makes P of A true. In our example up here, that was Sarah. 
And so we can conclude, therefore, A makes Q of A true. All right. So this is universal modus ponens, and it allows us to use these quantifiers, in this case the for all, to say a general statement about a group, and then we can conclude specifics, we can conclude that property about a specific element in the group. Okay. So in this case, uh, we're going to see more of this symbology later, but I can say that A is an element of whatever our set or group X is. So let's, let's do another one. Let's do modus, universal modus tollens. So notice how here, this is the same as modus ponens, right? Modus ponens usually says P implies Q. We're given P, therefore Q. That's really what we're doing here except now we're using these capital letters because it's more, it's like a, it's a set or function instead of just a single thing, a single statement like it was down below. Okay, so we can do modus ponens this way and we can do modus tollens this way. So let's look at how the modus tollens works. Again, I'm going to do an example first. I'm going to say if a student... studies hard, then they will pass the class. Tom did not pass the class. So we can conclude that Tom did not study hard. Right. And again, we're starting with a general category and we're moving down into the specific. So once again, we can do our explanation that if X makes P of X true, then X makes Q of X true. We know that some particular A did not make Q of X or Q, excuse me, Q of A true. So therefore, that particular A does not make P of A true. Again, we're starting with the general and moving to the specific. So all the argument forms have similar universal forms. Right? So we saw generalization and specialization in the last module, or excuse me, in the uh, in a previous video in this module, and same with elimination, transitivity, and division into cases, these all have corresponding universal forms, and so do the errors. So we have the universal converse error. and the universal inverse error as well. So you've got to be on the lookout for those. So let's go back to the argument that sort of started all of this. 
we talk about all men are mortal. That is a group. Then we specify that Socrates is a member of that group. And that that means that Socrates is mortal. Now, if you're a little confused because this is not an implication, we could rewrite this. We could say, for all x, if x is a man, then x is mortal. Right? We have an if then, we have a conditional statement. We then note that Socrates is a man, and therefore we can conclude that Socrates is mortal. So what is the argument form for this argument? Well, I gave you a lot of it right there, but the actual argument form is going to be simplified further. So the argument form is going to be for all x, p of x implies q of x, p of x is given, so therefore we conclude that q of x is true. All right, so is this a valid argument form? Yes, this is universal modus ponens. So this uses that property of universal instantiation to allow us to expand our argument to use these quantifiers, such as all men, and we can um, parse this and say this is valid. This is a known form, universal modus ponens. Let's look at another. All humans are mortal. Felix is immortal. Felix is a human. So what's the argument form for this? Well, I'm not going to write this in English. We're going to just interpret straight into an argument form. This is going to be for all x, if x is human, implies that x is mortal. Right now we have Felix is mortal, so we say that Felix is mortal, therefore we're concluding that Felix is a human. Now, is this a logical argument? Is it valid? Um, it turns out this is not valid. So this is not valid. This is the converse error. Or more specifically, it is the universal converse error. Right? So for an example, um, this may be, uh, this is from probably before you guys, uh, most of you were, were around, but there was an old show called Felix the Cat, right? Just because Felix is mortal does not make him human, right? We can't conclude this. Right. It is indeed true, so this is a, this would be sound if it were valid, because humans are mortal, that's true, 
But it, we cannot conclude that just because we know that something is mortal, that that mu thing must be human, right? That Felix could be a cat or it could be a cow or anything other than human, right? Or it could be a human. But we can't conclude that. We can't conclude that it's human. Let's do one more. We're going to look at, this is another classic argument. What, all humans are mortal. Zeus is not mortal. Therefore, Zeus is not human. So again, we're going to start with the argument form. For all x, human of x implies that x is mortal. We have that somebody, Zeus, is not mortal. Right? So can we logically con conclude that Zeus is not human? Does anybody recognize this? It turns out that this, I'm hoping you recognized it, this is indeed valid. This is, in fact, universal modus tollens. Okay, so this, again, it follows that modus tollens rule, which says... P implies Q. This makes use of the contrapositive, the fact that the contrapositive is equivalent to the original implication. So not Q. Therefore, we can conclude not P. Right. So this is standard modus tollens, and this is universal modus tollens. Okay, and that is the end of this module.